Hi guys, thank you for joining the live stream. Good evening. Today we will continue uh, the book Shakti and Shakta by Sir John Woodruff, the former judge of the Calcutta High Court during British India, who became uh, a Tantra Upasak, Sadhak. And uh, we could have finished the book Introduction to Tantra Shastra, the other book we are discussing in our live streams today, if we had started it, but only 40 pages are remaining. But I thought let's just mix and match things up and it will be uh, great uh, of a learning experience as well because the topics are kind of similar in, in the two books. So we will kind of uh, it will help us to read that book because of the knowledge we gathered from this book. And now we have done two days of that book. So everything we learned from that book will also help me at least read this book now of which we have done just the uh, first chapter. So just keeping things fresh and <laughs> and and uh, surprising so i think tomorrow i will probably do a bengali live stream after a long time i think it's time and the day after again uh, we will do uh, introduction to tantra shastra that's that's uh, if if some sudden sudden uh, music project doesn't come up again and f saturday nights i'm going to keep for rebuttal of some uh, stupid youtuber or commie youtuber etc okay are Mukta Bharatiya is online. How are you? She's first uh, for the first time online at, at in the middle of the night. <laughs> Maybe she'll go off right now. Hello, Shangramji. Hello. Late. Hello, everyone. Yes, for three minutes late. Every day I'm three minutes late, and that's when Rashti uh, calls me out. <laughs> Mukta Bharatiya is one of my earliest supporters in this venture. R actually. Uh, probably when I had f made like one or two videos or probably even before I had made any vi videos actually Namaskaram okay mm. so today's uh, second chapter is called Shakti the world as power let's start there is no word of wider content in any language than this Sanskrit term meaning power. <laughs> That's a good way to start a chapter that this term called Shakti means so many things. Because Shakti in the highest causal sense is God as mother and in another sense it is the universe which issues from her womb. And what is there which is neither the one nor the other. Therefore. The Yogini Hridaya Tantra thus salutes her, her with capital H, who conceives, bears, produces and thereafter nourishes all worlds. The quote goes, Obeisance be to her who is pure, being consciousness bliss, meaning Satchidananda, being consciousness bliss as power, who exists in the form of time and space and all that is therein, who is the radiant illuminatrix in all beings. Those who know these quotes, uh, Sanskrit, at least the shlokas, they will probably know which shloka they are talking about here. Only the translation is given here. It's from Yogini Hridaya Tantra. It is, uh, but we know the common terms, right? Obeisance be to her. Uh, that will probably mean Om Nama, and her probably means uh, to to Devi. Probably being consciousness bliss is Satchidananda. Power is Shakti. Time and space would be uh, Kal and something else. Illuminatrix, I, I wonder what it would be. It is therefore possible only to outline here in a very general way a few of the more important principles of the Shakti doctrine, omitting its deeply interesting practice, that is sadhana, in its forms as ritual worship and yoga. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, welcome, Mukta Bharatiya. Bhai, Amar Monohai, trending topic of video create kara subscriber barao, then Ishab niche topic a video karo. yeah uh, actually i keep doing uh, niche topics so that my uh, my learning is first and foremost on s absolute solid ground so that i don't uh, b conjure up random arguments based on four or five things i've heard here and there based on podcasts and then get caught off guard in front of someone who has actually studied more than me that would be a disaster so it's okay L let's all learn together gradually have our learning on all topics on, on on absolute solid ground and then be absolutely bull have bulletproof arguments today western science speaks of energy as the physical ultimate of all forms of matter so has it been for ages to the shaktas as the worshippers of shakti are called but they add that such energy is only a limited manifestation as mind and matter 
of the almighty infinite supreme power mahashakti of becoming in that which is tat which is unitary being sat itself their doctrine is to be found in the traditions oral and written which are contained in the agamas which with purana smriti and veda constitute one of the four great classes of scripture of the hindus the tantras are scriptures of the agama the notion that they are uh, some queer by product of hinduism and not an integral part of it is erroneous the three chief divisions of the agama are locally named bengal or gaura kashmir and kerala that bengal is a home of tantra shastra is well known it is however little known that kashmir was in the past a land where tantric doctrine and practice were widely followed but remember that famous quote from kashmir files and that sociology professor who said that kashmir has never been an integral part of india and that's a historical pa- fact the communities of so called tantric worshippers are fivefold according as the cult is of the uh, sun ganesha vishnu shiva or shakti to the knower however the five named are not distinct divinities but different aspects of the one power or shakti an instructed shakti worshipper instructed meaning this kind of initiation who i guess dikshit an instructed shakti worshipper is one of the least sectarian of men he does not care about sects because as far as i remember there was uh, in some podcast rajeshinandi was saying that bhairava has said to bhairavi that i have created all all these sampradayas to to filter out the fools so that they fight amongst themselves and and uh, keep thinking that 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 sampradaya is better and this sampradaya is better in the end everyone is worshiping me he can worship in all temples as the saying is thus the sammohana tantra says that he is a fool who sees any difference between rama and avatar of vishnu and shiva wow <laughs> now tell these two <laughs> people who say ram is is an outsider in bengal what matters the name says the commentator of uh, sat uh, sat chakra Sat Chakra Nirupana. After running through uh, the gamut of them, the Shakta is so called because the chosen deity of his worship or his Ishta Devta is Shakti. In his cult, both in doctrine and practice, emphasis is okay. Now, uh, this this book was written in nineteen eighteen, right? So back then, uh, cult was not always used as a negative term, as it has become a negative term only recently, basically. so here cult just means a section of a of a larger religion of a larger religious society in this cult both in doctrine and practice emphasis is laid on the aspect of the one one with capital o in which it it again with capital i laid on the aspect of the one in which it is the source of change and in the form of time and space and all objects therein it is change itself the word shakti is grammatically feminine for this reason an american orientalist critic of the doctrine has described it as a worthless system a mere feminization of orthodox whatever that meant <laughs> uh, feminization of orthodox vedanta Wh- what the hell does that mean <laughs> a doctrine teaching the primacy of the female and thus fit only for quote unquote suffragette monists it is absurd criticism of this kind which makes the hindu sometimes wonder whether the european has even the capacity to understand his beliefs <laughs> it is said of the mother in the hymn to her in mahakala samhita quote thou art neither girl nor maid nor old indeed thou art neither female nor male nor neuter thou art inconceivable immeasurable power the being of all which exists void of all duality the supreme brahman attainable in illumination alone end quote those who cannot understand lofty ideas when presented in ritual and symbolic garb will serve their reputation best by not speaking of them <laughs> it's best that you don't <laughs> talk about it if you don't get it this is hilarious uh, john woodruff trolling his contemporaries uh, his his people own people from from england um is hind the same as india bharat the, the land mass is same Uh, Kashmir has never been an integral part of India, Shakti. No, I was being sarcastic. I was quoting a a comic sociology professor who was quoted in Kashmir Files. Mm. Okay, the Shiva is so called because his chosen divinity is Shiva, the the name for the changeless aspect of the One, whose power of action and activity is Shakti. But as the two are necessarily associated, all communities acknowledge Shakti. 
it is for the above reason a mistake uh, to sup uh, it is therefore a mistake to suppose that a quote unquote tantric or follower of the agama is necessarily a shakta and that the tantra is a shakta scripture only it is not that because it's all always uh, in association with shaivism the shakta is only one branch of the agamic school and so we find the scriptures of shaivism whether of north or south called tantras as also those of the that ancient form of vaishnavism which is called the pancha pancharatra interesting vaishnavism was also there and of course this is before people actually uh, found out that uh, mahasthangar in bengal was also an equally important hub of uh, shaivism or maybe uh, he knows that because he does ac- acknowledge bengal repeatedly he he was initiated by a bengali uh, tantric guru himself uh, i'm talking about the author sir john woodruff uh, but <coughs> uh maybe he did not know the details of exactly where mahasthanam was etc because uh, uh back then in um arthashastra was found only 1914 so there were some gaps that they did not know of by then uh, it was found in 1914 i think it was translated about 2 3 years later and this is written so just like one or two years after the arthashastra has just been translated in the first place The doctrine of these communities which share certain common ideas varies from the monism of the shaktas and northern shaivas to the more or less dualistic system of others the ritual is to a large extent common in all communities though there are necessarily variations due both to the nature to the divine aspect worshiped and to the particular form of theology taught shakta doctrine and practice are contained primarily in the shakta tantras and the oral traditions some of which are secret as the tantras are mainly scriptures of worship such doctrine is contained by implication in the ritual okay as the tantras are mainly scriptures of worship therefore such doctrine is contained by implication in the ritual for reasons above stated recourse may be had to may be had to other scriptures in so far as they share with those of the shakta certain common doctrines and practices the tantras proper are the word of shiva and shakti but there are also valuable tantric works in the nature of compendia and commentaries which are not of divine scholarship like abhinav gupta's itself the tantra loka the concept shakti is not however peculiar to the shaktas every hindu believes in shakti as god's power though he may differ as to the nature of the universe created by it shakti doctrine is a special presentiment presentment of so called monism or advaita uh, that is not true uh um, monism and shakta ritual even in those condemned forms which have given rise to the abuses by which this scripture is most generally known is a practical application of it whatever may have been the case at the origin of these agamic cults all now and for ages past recognize and claim to base base themselves on the vedas with these are coupled the word of shiva shakti as revealed in the tantras shakta doctrine is like the vedanta in general what in western parlance would be called a theology based on revelation that is so called spiritual or super sensual experience in its primary or secondary sense because veda is exactly that this leads to a consideration of the measure of man's knowing and of the basis of vedantic knowledge it is a fundamental error to regard the vedanta as simply a speculative metaphysic in the modern western sense it is not so if it were it would have no greater right to acceptance than any other of the many system which jostle one another for our custom in the philosophical fair it claims that its super sensual teachings can be established with certainty by the practice of its methods and this is what rajeshri nandi has repeatedly said in every podcast he has ever appeared in that uh, you cannot understand tantra by just reading books and i am consciously doing that because i am taking the scholarly approach uh but and he has said that if you want to take the scholarly approach this very author sir john woodruff is your best guy to go to you, you read his books or rajeshri nandi's own book adhyatmikta but experience is first and foremost even in my uh, even the sri vigyan bharat tantra i'm, I'm uh, studying uh, it's it's repeatedly mentioned that it's first and foremost all about experience and practice first hand experience first hand experience practice ritual that is the end all be all of tantra not not scholarly approach not not finding out some wisdom to use as quotes here and there that is there but first and foremost is practice and therefore the experience coming out of that practice 
theorizing alone is insufficient exactly what we were discussing the shakta above all is a practical and active man worshiping the divine activity his watchword is kriya or action taught that he is power he desires fully to realize himself in fact as such a tantric poem Anand- ananda stotra speaks with amused disdain of the learned chatterers who pass their time okay they are talking about me now <laughs> oh my god i'm getting trolled while reading about the subject i'm interested in <laughs> a tantric this is see this is why hinduism can't be a conversion uh, machinery <laughs> they they are ma- making fun of people who are interested in it uh, in a scholarly <laughs> scholarly way <laughs> a tantric poem ananda stotra speaks with amused disdain of the learned chatterers <laughs> who pass their time in futile debate around the shores of the quote unquote lake of doubt <laughs> the basis of knowing whether in super sense or uh, sense knowledge is actually <laughs> is actual experience experience is of two kinds the whole or full experience and incomplete experience that is of parts not of but in the whole Uh, in the first experience consciousness is said to be upward looking unmukhi that is not looking to another in the second experience it is outward looking bahirmukhi the first is not an experience of the whole but the experience whole the second is an experience not of parts of the whole for the latter is because the latter is partless the whole is partless it does not have parts but it is the experience of parts in the whole and issuing from it and issuing from it from its infinite power to know itself in and as the finite centers as the many okay it's a complex sentence let's read this again the second the bahirmukhi is an experience not of parts of the whole because the latter is partless but of parts in the whole and issuing from its infinite power to know itself in and as the finite centers as the many the work of an indian philosopher my friend professor pramodhanath mukherji mukhopadhyay aptly call the first the fact that is the unmukhi is the fact and the second is the fact section the bahirmukhi the isha upanishad calls the supreme experience purna the full or whole <coughs> it is not uh, it is not be it noted a residue of the abstracting intellect which which is itself only a limited stress in consciousness but it is a plenum in which the existent all is as one whole theologically this full experience is shiva with shakti at rest or as potency the second experience is that of the finite centers the numerous purushas or jivas which are also called uh, which are also shiva shakti as potency actualized potency actualized meaning the the whatever was the potential of that potency has been uh, executed both experiences are re- both experiences are real in fact there is nothing unreal anywhere all is the mother and she is reality herself reality itself saham she i am and the the shakta says and all that he senses is she in the form in which he perceives her it is she who in and as him drinks the consecrated wine and she is the wine okay it is she who in and as him drinks the consecrated wine and she is also the wine itself all is manifested power which has the reality of being from which it is put forth but the reality of the manifestation is of something which appears and disappears will that of causal power uh karan shakti which will that of causal power to appear is enduring but this disappearance is only the ceasing to be but this disappearance is okay now this is aurobindo type of english the sentence constructions are very old school but this disappearance is only the ceasing to be stopping to be uh for a limited consciousness the seed of power which appears as a thing for such consciousness okay the seed of power which appears as a thing for such consciousness remains as the potency in infinite being itself the infinite experience is real as the full purna that is its reality is fullness the finite experience is real as such there is perhaps no subject in vedanta which is more misunderstood than that of the so called quote unquote unreality of the world 
every school admits the reality of all finite experiences. While such experience lasts, even of quote unquote elusive experience, strictly so called. But Shankaracharya defines the truly real as that which is changeless. In this sense, the world as a changing thing has relative reality only, relative reality only, not full reality. Shankara so defines reality because he sets forth his doctrine from the standpoint of transcendent being. The Shakta Shastra, on the other hand, is a practical scripture of worship delivered from the world standpoint, according to which the world is necessarily real. According to this view, a thing may be real and yet be the subject of change. So here they are differing from Shankaracharya as far as I can see. But its reality as a thing ceases with the passing of the finite experiencer to whom it is real. Okay, Its reality as a thing stops with the passing of the finite experiencer to whom it is real. The supreme Shiva Shakti is on the other hand a real full experience which, which forever endures. A worshipper must as such believe in the reality of himself, of the world as his field of action and instrument, in its causation by God and in God himself as the object of worship. Moreover to him, moreover to him the world is real because Shiva Shakti, which is its material cause, is real. That cause, without ceasing to be what it is, becomes the effect. Shiva Shakti is the cause and Shiva Shakti is the effect. F further, the world is the Lord's experience. He as Lord, Pati, is the whole experience and as creature, Pashu, he is the experiencer of parts in it. The experiencer of the Lord is never unreal. The reality, however, which changelessly endures, uh, changelessly endures may be said to be reality in its fullest sense. Nice. The reality, however, which changelessly endures may be said to be reality in its fullest sense according to even Shankaracharya's definition then. The reality which changelessly endures may be said to be reality in its fullest sense, if we so choose. Real, however, as all experience is, the knowing differs according as the experience is infinite or finite. And in the latter case, in the finite sense, according to various grades of knowing, full experience as its name implies is full in every way. Assume that there is at any time, quote unquote time, no universe at all, then there is uh, that there is then a complete dissolution of all universes and not of any particular universe. Even then, the power which produced past and will produce future universe universes is one with the supreme consciousness whose Shakti it is. When again this power actualizes as a universe, okay, when again this power actualizes, whenever it actualizes again as a universe, the Lord Consciousness from and in whom it issues is the All-Knower. As Sarvagnya, he knows all generals and as Sarvavit, all particulars. But all is known by him as the Supreme Self and not, as in the case of the finite center, it's not as objects other than, limited, other, other than the limited self. Let's, let's read this again. So as Sarvagnya, he uh, knows all generals. As Sarvavit, he knows all particulars. But all is known by him as the Supreme Self, not as objects other than the limited self. <coughs> Mukta Bharatiya is saying, love this, the philosophical part of Hinduism. It gives me chills. It's like picturing ourselves surrounded by universal serial graphics, exactly. <laughs> and it's uh, taking, uh, talking back to us. Uh, it's why I hin became Hindu by choice, yes. Mm, Hiran is saying, uh, string has opened its own OTT similar to, oh, uh, but when it comes to philosophical thoughts, uh, the he his ideas don't sound convincing and sometimes outright wrong. Who is uh, Sarva Priyananda? Uh, it could be social conditioning, uh, whereas confirmation bias. Safe soil and Kaveri calling is a different type of thing. I was talking about his works to unite Hindus on ground. Also, uh, they can't claim to be a Hindu organization. Finite experience is by its definition a limited thing. As the experience is of sectional character, it is obvious that the knowing can only be of parts. You can know only parts and not of the whole. As the part cannot know the whole of which it is a part. Okay, we'll have to read this again. This is pretty dense. 
finite experience okay not infinite experience finite experience is by its definition a limited thing as the experience is of a of sectional character it is obvious that the knowing can only be of parts and not of the whole as the part cannot know the whole of which it is a part but the finite is not always so it may expand into the infinite by processes which bridge the one to the other the essential uh, the essential of partial experience is knowing in time and space the supreme uh, the essential of partial experience is knowing in capital letters time and space the supreme experience being changeless is beyond both time and space as aspects of change the latter is the alteration of parts the latter meaning the uh, the the supreme experience the supreme experience is the alteration of parts relative to one another in the changeless whole a whole with capital w full experience is not sense knowledge the latter is worldly knowledge or logical logical gyana by a limited knowing center of material objects whether gross or subtle material objects whether sukshma or or sthula full experience is the supreme knowing self which is not an object at all this is unworldly knowledge alaukika gyana or veda sense knowledge varies according to the capacity and attainments of the experiencer but the normal experience may be enhanced in two ways either physically by scientific instruments such as the telescope and microscope which enhance the natural capacity to see or psychically by the attainment of what are called psychic powers everything is shakti but psychic powers power denotes that enhancement of normal capacity which gives knowledge of matter in its subtle form whilst the normal man can perceive it only in the sthula form in the gross form as a compound of sensible matter the bhutas psychic power is thus an extension of natural faculty there is nothing quote unquote supernatural about it all is natural all is real it is simply a power above the normal thus the clairvoyant can see what the normal experiencer cannot he does so by the mind the gross sense organs the sthula sense organs are not according to vedanta the senses indriya the senses is the mind which normally works through the appropriate physical organs but which as the real factor in sensation may do without them as is seen both in hypnotic and yogic states the area of knowledge is uh, very widely increased in knowledge may be gained of subtle chemistry subtle uh, physiology and uh, as of the chakras or subtle bodily centers of various powers of the quote unquote world of spirits and so forth bhuta loka i guess the world of spirits but though we are here dealing with subtle things sukshma things they are still things and thus part of the sense world of objects that is of the world of maya maya as later explained is not illusion but experience in time and space of self and not self so okay uh, maya is not just illusion or not illusion it is experience in time and space of self and also of not self this is by no means necessarily illusion the whole therefore cannot be known by sense knowledge because we uh, this was an interesting clarification that even even though we are discussing just uh, subtle things but they are still things and therefore any thing if if it's a thing it's it comes under the realm of sense knowledge this is by no means necessarily illusion the whole therefore cannot be known by sense knowledge because it's not one thing we are we were just talking about parts of the whole parts are the thing i mean some parts are things the entire entire whole is not a thing in short sense or worldly knowledge cannot establish that is prove what is supersensual such as the whole its nature and the quote unquote other side of its process is taken as a collectivity reasoning whether working in metaphysic or science is based on the data of sense and governed by those forms of understanding which constitute the nature of finite mind which constitute the nature of finite mind it may establish because you are depending on your uh, five senses it may establish a conclusion of probability but not of certainty ground of probability may be made out of made out for idealism realism pluralism and monism or any other philosophical system in fact from what we see the balance of probability perhaps favors 
realism and pluralism. Reason may thus establish that an effect must have a cause, but not that the cause is one. So, so the cause can't be the effect. For all that we can say, there may be as many causes as effects. Therefore, it is said in Vedanta that nothing in these matters is, is established by argument. All Western systems which do not possess actual spiritual experience as their basis are systems which can claim no certainty as regards any matter not verifiable by sense knowledge and reasoning thereon. Interesting. Shakta and indeed all Vedantic teaching holds that the only source and authority or pramana as regards supersensual matters such as the nature of being in itself and like is Veda. Veda which comes from the root vid to know is knowledge par excellence that is supersensual experience which according to the monist to use the nearest English term is the experience whole. It may be primary or secondary. As the first it is uh, as, as primary it is the actual experience or shakshatkara uh, yeah shakshatkara in Bengali shakshatkara which in English is called spiritual experience the shakta as a monist says that Veda is full experience as the one this is not an object of knowledge this knowing is being being with capital B this knowing is being the, the, the fact that you know the, the you knowing that you knowing it is the being itself quote to know Brahman is to be Brahman he is a quote unquote monist not because of rational argument not be, not because of rational argument only although he can adduce reasoning in his support but mainly because he or those whom he follows have had in fact such monistic experience and therefore in light of such experience interpret the Vedantic text Wow, this book is pretty, pretty, uh, uh, actually has great information and, and lucidly explained. Um, I had not uh, gained so much knowledge from uh, even reading some other uh, important books. This is explaining a lot of things. It's, it's written like a uh, serious educational journal. By the way, do you know Sri Krishna is referred uh, referred to as Bhutanam Ishwara? So even Bhut term is not necessarily ascribed to what Hindi speakers think of. Hmm. Yeah, Bhut can be spirit. It Bhut can be ghost. Bhut can be past. Bhut has many meanings in different ca contexts, right? But okay, and remember, guys, uh, uh, we we were just discussing pramana as well. Pramana meaning proof. We have different kinds of pramana. Uh, the the, the Pramana that we get from just five senses is called Chakshusha Pramana or Pratyaksha Pramana. But then there is Manas Pratyaksha Pramana and there is Inference uh, which is uh, Anumana Pramana. But I guess they are not uh, acknowledged. Anumana Pramana and Manas Pratyaksha Pramana is not uh, acknowledged as, as, the, uh, as a valid Pramana in all schools of thought in Hinduism. But quote unquote spiritual experience to use that English term may be incomplete both as to duration and nature thus from the imperfect ecstasy sa uh, Savikalpa Samadhi even when a even when of a monistic character there is a return to world experience again it may not be completely monistic in form or maybe even of a distinctly dualistic character this only means that the realization has stopped short of the final goal <laughs> this being the case that goal is still perceived through the forms of duality which linger as part of the constitution of the experiencer Com constitution in, th in this case meaning the mind this being the case that goal that goal is still perceived through the forms of duality which linger as part of the constitution of the experiencer thus there are Vedantic and other schools which are not quote unquote monistic the spiritual experiences of all are real experiences whatever be their character and they are true according to the truth of the stage in which the experience is had. Do they contradict one another? The experience which a man has of a fountain of a mountain at 50 miles distance is not false because it is at a, at a variance with that of the man who has climbed it. <laughs> Interesting. What he sees is the thing from where he sees it. The first question then is, is there a monistic experience in fact? Not whether monism is rational or not and shown to be probable, probable to the intellect. But how can we know this? With certainty, 
only with certain with certainty only by having the experience it oneself the validity of the experience for the experiencer cannot be assailed otherwise than by alleging fraud or self deception but how can this be proved to the experiencer his experience is real and nothing else is of any account but the spiritual experience of one is no proof to another who refuses to accept it a man may however accept what another says having faith in the latter's alleged experience here we have the secondary meaning of veda that is secondary knowledge of supersensual truth not based on actual experience of the believer but on the experience of some other which the former accepts in this sense veda is recorded for Bra- for brahmanism in the scriptures called vedas which contains the standard experience of those whom brahmanism recognizes as its rishis or seers but the interpretation of the vedic record is in question just as that of the bible is why accept one interpretation rather than another this is a lengthy matter suffice to say that uh, suffice to say here that each chooses the spiritual food which his spiritual body needs and which it is capable of eating and assimilating this is the doctrine of adhikara here as elsewhere what is one's me- one man's meat is another man's poison nature works in all who are not altogether beyond her workings okay interesting sentence nature works in all who are not altogether beyond her workings what is called the will to believe involves the affirmation that the form of a man's faith is the expression of his nature hmm isn't it isn't this so correct what is called the will to believe involves the affirmation that the, f- the that the form of a man's faith is the expression of his nature the faith is the man it is not man's reason only which leads to the adoption of a particular religious belief it is the whole man as evolved at that particular time which does so his affirmation of faith is an affirmation of his self in terms of it the shakta is therefore a monist either because he has had himself spiritual experiences of this character or because he accepts the teaching of those who claim to have had such experience this is so so well written guys this is apta knowledge that is received from a source of authority apta vakya just as knowledge of the scientific or other expert is received because not you are not always going around doing the experi- experiments yourself right you are listening to to a scientist it is true that the latter may be verified but so in its own way can the former be so just just like uh, today's scientific things scientific information and and uh, claims can be verified in the same way <coughs> in its own way even the former the the other things we are discussing can also be verified in its own way revelation to the hindu is not something stated quote unquote from above which is uh, incapable of verification below he who accepts revelation as teaching the unity of the many in the one may himself verify it in his own experience how if the disciple is what is called not fit to receive the truth in this monistic form he will probably declare it to be untrue and adhering to disposed <coughs> and adhering to what he thinks is true will not further trouble himself in the matter if he is disposed to accept the teachings of monistic religion philosophy it is because his own spiritual and psychical nature is at a stage which leads directly to actual monistic experience though in a longer or shorter time as may be the case a particular form of spiritual knowledge like a particular psychic power can be developed only in him who has the capacity for it to such an one asking with desire for the fruit phala how he may gather it the guru says follow the path of those who have achieved siddha and you will gain what they gained this is the path of the great who are the uh, who are those whom we esteem to be such we esteem them because they have achieved that which we believe to be both worthy and possible if a would be disciple refuses to follow the method or sadhana he cannot complain that he has not had its result though reason by itself cannot establish more than a probability yet when the supersensual truth has been learnt by veda it may be shown to be con- uh, conformable to reason and this must be so because all realities are of one piece and this must be so because all realities are of one piece reason is a limited manifestation of the same shakti who is fully known in ecstasy or samadhi which trans- transcends all reasoning what therefore is irrational can never be spiritually true 
with the aid of the light of revelation the path is made clear and all that is seen tells of the unseen facts of daily life give auxiliary proof so many miss the truth which lies under their eyes because to find it they look away or upwards to some fancy quote unquote heaven the sophisticated mind fears the obvious it is here it is here the shakta and others say for he and every other being is a microcosm and so the uh, uh, vishvasara tantra says quote what is here is elsewhere what is not here is nowhere exactly what we discussed even last day in our in the book introduction to tantra tantra shastra that is with this is why i was saying in the beginning of the live stream that reading these books parallelly will be extra fun and extra fruitful the unseen is the seen which is not some alien disguise behind which it lurks experience of the seen is the experience of the unseen in time and space the life of the individual is an exp- uh, uh, the life of the individual is an expression of the same laws which govern the universe thus the hindu knows from his own daily rest that the power power with capital p or shakti which projects the universe rests his dreamless slumber when only bliss is known ananda is known tells him in some fashion of the causal state of universal rest from the mode of his awakening and other psychological processes he divines the nature of creative thinking to to the shakta the thrill of union with his shakti is a faint reflection of the infinite shiva shakti bliss in and with which all universes are born mm. all matter is a relative relatively stable form of energy it lasts a while and disappears into energy the universe is maintained a while this is shakti as vaishnavi the maintainer at every moment creation as reju- as rejuvi rejuvenescent molecular activity is going on as the shakti brahmani at every moment there is molecular death and loosening of the forms the work of rudrani shakti creation did not take place only one at uh, only uh, did not take place only at some past time nor is dissolution only in the future at every moment of time there is both both creation and dissolution going on and it is now and before us here so it was in the beginning quote and quote in short the world is real it is a true experience observation and reason are here the guide even veda is no authority in matters falling within sense knowledge if veda were to contradict such knowledge it would as shankara says be in this respect no veda at all if veda contradicted such knowledge the hindu is not troubled by quote and quote biblical signs here and now the existence of the many is established for the sense experiencer but there is another and full experience which also may be had here and now and is in any case also a fact that is when the self stands out from mind and body and sense and sense experience the full experience full experience is with capital f and capital e this full experience is attained in ecstasy or samadhi both experiences may be had by the same experiencer it is thus the same one one with capital o who may become many quote he said may i be many as veda tells the will to be many is power or shakti which operates as maya in the preceding portion of this paper it was pointed out that the power whereby the one gives effect to its will to be many is maya shakti what are called the 36 tattvas accepted by both shaktas and shaivas are the stages of evolution of the one into the many as mind and matter again with what warrant is this affirmed the secondary proof is the word of shiva and shakti revealers of the tantra shastra as such word is uh, as such word with capital w is ex- is expounded in the teachings of the masters acharyas in the agama corroboration of their teaching may be had by observation of psychological stages in normal life and reasoning thereon these psychological states again are the individual r- representation of the collective cosmic processes quote as here so elsewhere i guess this is the translation for uh, jatha pinde tatha brahmande or probably not primary evidence is actual experience of the surrounding and supreme states man does not leap at one bound from ordinary finite ex- finite experience to the full experience okay 
man does not leap at one bound from uh, leap at one bound from ordinary finite e- sense experience to the full experience by stages he advances there too and by stages he retraces his steps to the world unless the fullness of experience has been such as to burn up in the fire of self knowledge the seed of desire which is the germ of the world man's consciousness has no fixed boundary on the contrary it is at root the infinite consciousness which appears in the form of a contraction or samkocha samkocha meaning hesitation due to limitation as shakti in the form of mind and matter this contraction may contraction or, or samkocha uh, in bengali it would be just hesitation this contraction may be greater or less as it is gradually loosened consciousness expands by degrees until all bonds being gone it becomes one with the full consciousness or purna thus there are according to common teaching seven ascending light planes of experience called lokas that is what are seen lokyante or experienced and seven dark descending planes or talas that is places it will be observed that one name is given from the subjective and other from the objective standpoint the center of these planes is the earth plane or bhur loka this is not the same as experience of earth for every experience including the highest and lowest can be had here the planes are not like geological strata though necessity may picture them thus right the earth plane is the normal experience the ascending planes the 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 ones going gradually upwards the ascending planes are states of supernormal and the descending planes of subnormal experience the highest of the planes is the truth plane satya loka beyond this is the supreme experience which is above all planes which is light itself and the love of shiva and shakti the heart of the supreme lord hridayam paramesh uh, parameshitu parameshitu the lowest tala on the dark side is described in the puranas with wonderful symbolic imagery as a place of darkness where monster serpents crowned with dim light live in perpetual anger below this is the shakti of the lord called tamomai shakti that is the veiling power of being veiling power of being in all its infinite intensity <sighs> Okay now let me have some water this chapter is still going on it's not ending r- any time soon and let me check some comments for a while This reminds me that Alberoni guy took lokas as the literals <laughs> Lokas are never literal even the even our concept of hell is not li- literal they are just temporary experiences transition transitory experiences we we actually read about the hindu concept of hell in detail in manusmriti and brahma puran uh mukta bhartiya saying it's like kya fark padta hai attitude just dilutes what is said versus what is uh, trendy to that time and age but trends change knowledge shouldn't hmm, exactly and that knowledge and that those principles uh, which don't change are sanatan by the way why are some of my messages uh, sent getting error and getting retracted i don't know let me turn the chat into live chat uh hiran sarkar is saying why was child marriage a cultural universal i don't know about other places in uh, Beng- in india uh, child marriage had to be done uh, to counter islamic invasions i can give you the adi daivik and adh- adh- adhyatmic explanation Swami Vivekananda is said to uh, have had accumulated so much shakti it was difficult for him to maintain his body in his mat- material plane also he considered his work kind of over Adi Shankaracharya uh, on the other hand was known to be a practitioner of Sri Vidya Tantra and indulged in stunts like the uh, Parakaya par- Pravesha to win that famous debate with Mandan Mishra Mandan Mishra which may be the reason for his early death also his death is not confirmed he just one day disappeared oh that that debate with mandan mishra is the one that is uh, w- w- is is presented in different places as plays right i guess where i think he lost the debate and accepted that uh, shankaracharya is is right okay mm. 
What then is the reality, whole or purna? It is certainly not a bare abstraction of intellect, because the intellect is only a fractional power or shakti in it. Such an abstraction has no worth for man. Right. Exactly what I'm reading in Kierkegaard as well, interestingly. <laughs> great w- very well said here it is certainly what what then is the reality or whole or purna it is certainly not a bare abstraction of intellect because uh, for the intellect is because the intellect is only a fractional power or shakti uh, uh, for the intellect is only a fractional power or shakti in it such an abstraction has no worth for a man it's useless in the supreme reality which is the whole there is everything which is worth to men and which proceeds from it in fact and which proceeds from it okay um in in the supreme reality which is the whole there is everything which is worth is which is of worth to men t- uh, which is of worth to men and which proceeds from from it from that reality in fact as a kashmir scripture says quote the without appears without only because it is within end quote unworth also proceeds from it not in not in the sense that it is there as unworth but because the experience of duality to which evil is attached arises in the blissful whole the full is not merely the collectivity or samashti of all which exists okay the full is not merely the collectivity or samashti of all which exists because it is both immanent in and transcends the universe it is a common place that it is unknowable except to itself shiva in the yogini hridaya tantra says quote who knows the heart of a woman only shiva knows the heart of yogini the supreme shakti for this reason the buddhist tantric schools call it shunya or the void this is not nothing but nothing known to mind and senses okay this is not quote unquote nothing but nothing known to mind and senses both shaktas and some vaishnavas use the term shunya and no one suspects them of being nihilists relatively however the one is said to be being sat bliss ananda and chit an untranslatable term which has been most accurately defined as the changeless principle of all changing experience okay great no, fair enough chit therefore is changeless principle of all changing experience a principle of which sensation perception conception self consciousness feeling memory will and all other psychic states are limited modes it is not therefore consciousness or feeling as we understand these words uh, okay it is not therefore consciousness or feeling okay Th- here it's a very in- important distinction that's being made here chit in many contexts is actually consciousness or feeling but for our purposes right now at this moment here chit is not just consciousness or feeling as we understand these words because these are directed and limited it is the finite root of which they are the finite flower but consciousness and possibly uh, feeling approach the most nearly to the definition provided that we do not understand thereby consciousness and feeling in man's sense hmm. according to the more ancient views but this is uh, if if you do not understand it just uh, by man's feeling or man's consciousness then it's fine then you can you, you can use the word consciousness or feeling we may thus just to distinguish call chit pure consciousness or pure feeling as bliss ananda knowing and enjoying its own full reality this as such pure consciousness or feeling endures even when finite centers of consciousness or feeling arise in it arise in it it with capital i as this system assumes if there is a real causal nexus between the two then being as shiva is also a power or shakti which is the source of all becoming the fully real real with capital r the fully real therefore has two aspects one called shiva the static aspect of consciousness and the other called shakti the kinetic aspect of the same for this reason kali shakti dark as a thunder cloud is represented standing and moving on the white inert body of shiva he is white as illumination prakasha he is inert because pure consciousness is without action and at rest it is she his power who moves dark is she here 
because as Kali, she dissolves all in darkness, that is, vacuity of existence, which is the light of being itself. Again, she is creatrix. Five corpse-like Shivas form the support of her throne. Set in the wish-granting groves of the Isle of Gems, Manidvipa, the golden sands of which are uh, laved by the still waters of the oceans of nectar or amrita, which is immortality. In both cases, we have a pictorial presentiment, presentment of in theological form of the scientific doctrine that to every form of activity, there is a static background. What a beautiful way to explain this, guys. I'm uh, I'm finding this book very much worth the money. I hope you all buy buy this book as well and read this along with me. It's it's this one is actually pretty cheap, or uh, uh, cheap at the moment. Today I saw th uh, I saw the prices. It's, it was hard. It was under four hundred rupees. So, in both cases, we have a pictorial presentment in theological form of the scientific doctrine that to every form of activity there is a static background. <sighs> Uh, Mukta Bharati is saying, marriage in Hinduism isn't centered around sex. Yeah, it was more like a spiritual growth together for which they needed uh, Sahajariya, like a wholesome partner. Yeah, sex wasn't a part until girl reached puberty. Hmm. Concept of marriage in Hinduism is more about Vedic rituals, Prakriti and Purush, if you will. Exactly. Uh, so is this Shunya close to what is there in Hindu Moksha? Uh, no, I don't think so. We will we will get more clarity as the book um, uh, ends. But until there is in fact change, Shakti is merely the potency of becoming in being. Becoming with capital B and being also in capital B, okay? But until there is in fact change, Shakti is merely the potency of becoming in being and as such is wholly one with it. Wholly one with it. being Meaning wholly one with the being. The power, Shakti, and the possessor of power, the Shaktiman, are one. Okay, this you have to you have to visualize in some way if you can, and and it's very important to grasp these particular base. These are the building blocks of uh, Hinduism, even or at least uh, Shaktiism and Shai Shaivism. This is very important that you get it. Thank God I had read uh, my my introduction to Hindu scriptures was basically or my introduction to any. Hinduism related related book was from uh, Sri Aurobindo's book, uh, the the Life Divine. So I uh, some of these concepts I have uh, gotten some clarity in my mind. So the power Shakti and the possessor of the power Shaktiman are one. Okay, take your time and imagine it. The Shakti and Shaktiman is one single entity. As therefore he is being bliss consciousness Satchidananda. As therefore he is Sachidananda, so is she. She is also the full Purna. Full with capital F. She is also the full Purna, which is no mere abstraction from its evolved manifestations. On the contrary, of her, the Mahakali Stotra says, quote, Though without feet thou movest more quickly than air, though without ears thou dost hear. Though, why is this all of a sudden Shakespearean English? Though without nostrils you do smell, I'm going to translate it on my own, okay? Though without nostrils you do smell, though without eyes you still see, though without tongue you still do taste all tastes, end quote. Those who talk of the bloodless abstractions of Vedanta have not understood it. <laughs> bloodless abstractions of Vedanta have not understood it. The ground of man's being is the supreme eye, Purnoham, which though in itself beyond finite personality I, oh this is pretty dense the ground of man's being is the supreme eye okay the ground of man's being is the supreme eye which is the purnoham which though in itself itself again with capital i which though in itself beyond finite personality is yet ever finitely personalizing as the beings of the universe saham she uh, she i am this is the Supreme Shakti, the ultimate object of the Shakta's adoration, though worshipped in several forms, some gentle, some formidable. But potency is actualized as the universe, and this also is Shakti. Yeah, potency is actualized as the universe, okay? 
the universe is the actualization of the potency and this is also uh, shakti because the effect is cause modified yeah this is one one uh, recurring motif in hinduism the effect is the cause modified monastic vedanta teaches that god is the uh, material cause of the world the statement that the supreme shakti also exists as the forms evolved from it the statement that the supreme shakti also exists as the forms evolved from it it with capital i forms evolved from it may seem to conflict with the doctrine that power is ultimately one with shiva who is a changeless being shankara answers that the existence of a causal nexus is maya and that there is and that there is only a seeming cause and seeming modification or effect from the transcendental standpoint the shakta whom his world standpoint posits the reality of god as the cause of the universe replies that while it is true that the effect as effect is the cause modified the cause as cause remains what it what it was and is and will be this is very advanced stuff the shakta who from his uh, world standpoint posits the reality of god as the cause of the universe replies that while it is true that the effect as effect is the cause modified the cause remains what it was and is and will be creative evolution of the universe thus differs from the evolution in the universe yeah creative evolution of the universe thus differs from the evolution in the universe right so um which which we are considering as uh, as ever changing and which we are considering as not changing needs to be clarified and this example of the universe uh, works perfectly to explain that okay the changes uh, the evolution of the universe is not the same as the evolutions going on inside the universe hmm creative evolution of the universe thus differs from the evolution in it in the latter case in the in the case of the evolutions going on inside the universe the material cause when producing an effect stops being what it was okay the material cause when producing an effect stops being a cause thus milk turned into curd stops being milk but the uh, sim- simile given of the other evolutionary process is that of light from light because light if it is born of light even then the causal light is still the light but curd is no longer milk there is a similarity between the uh, one thing we one one thing we have to uh, ac- um, acknowledge from a from an atheist standpoint is that there is no way a society can delve this deep into philosophy unless there are kshatriyas protecting the society no way this 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 actually shows the gigantic credit kshatriyas deserved there is a similarity between the conventional stand but this feels like i am doing b- 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 dumbbells workouts with my brain there is a similarity between the quote unquote conventional standpoint of shankara <laughs> and the explanation of the shakta interesting there is a similarity between the so called conventional standpoint of shankara and the explanation of the shakta the difference being that well while to to shankaracharya the effect is unreal it is from the shakta's immanent standpoint real okay because shankaracharya's standpoint is from the transcendental standpoint whereas from uh, the shakta's perspective it is the immanent uh, standpoint fair enough it will have been so this is pretty uh, again interesting that a lot of people will perhaps claim that shaktas are opposed to shankaracharya whereas arthur avalon or john woodruff uh, as his real name is is clarifying that shankaracharya was speaking from a transcendental standpoint but shaktas are are talking from from an immanent standpoint <sighs> anyone is saying i have read this example of curd in a certain story anyone remember where it where it is from should it, shouldn't it be from something related to uh, lord krishna maybe 
now this Maya concept of Shankaracharya is tormented by a <laughs> lot of people in like his con. I mean, everywhere you go, you always see the persons tormenting it, especially Arya Samaj. Yeah, Maya, Maya is pretty uh, misunderstood. Uh, its translation hai hi nahi, kya kare? It will have been observed that the cosmic evolution is in the nature of a polarization. It will have been observed that the cosmic evolution is in the nature of a polarization in being, being with capital B. It is in the nature of a polarization in being into static and kinetic aspects. Static and kinetic. This is symbolized in the Shakta Tantras by their comparison of Shiva Shakti to a grain or Kanaka. This has two seeds which are so close together as to seem one and which are surrounded by a single sheath. What beautiful imagery. The seeds are Shiva and Shakti and the sheath is Maya. Wow. <laughs> what a culture we are part of. When the sheath is unpeeled, that is when Maya Shakti operates. The two seeds come apart. The sheath unrolls when the seeds are ready to germinate. That is when in the dreamless slumber or Shushupti, okay, the sheath unrolls when the seeds are ready to germinate. That is when in the dreamless slumber or shushupti of the world consciousness, the remembrance of past enjoyment in form gives rise to that divine creative thinking or quote-unquote imagining, svitikalpana, which is creation. Whew. As the universe in dissolution sinks into a memory which is lost, so it is born again from the germ of recalled memory or shakti. Why? Such a question may be answered when we are dealing with facts in the whole. But the latter itself is uncaused, okay? The latter meaning uh, the, the memory or shakti. From the germ of recalled memory or shakti. So, yeah. Uh, but, the, but the shakti itself is uncaused and what is caused is not the whole. Manifestation is of the nature of being power. Manifestation is of the nature of being power just as it is its nature. Its nature, okay, it with capital I. Just as it is just as it is its nature to return to itself after the actualization of power, power with capital P. To the devotee who speaks in theological language, quote unquote, it is his will. As the Yogini Rudaya says, quote, he painted the world picture on himself with the brush which is his will and was pleased therewith. End quote. Again, the world is called a prapancha. Again, the world is called a prapancha, that is an extension of the five forms of sensible matter or bhuta. Where does it go at dissolution? It collapses into a point, bindu. I have actually uh, started concluding that uh, women wear the bindi mm, as as a symbol of of the the bindu, and um, I was reading something in Sri Vigyan Bharat Tantra. I can't really articulate what I understood from it, and I am not supposed to read it uh, out aloud to random people as well. But hope you all someday read the Sri Vigyan Bharat Tantra. You will actually read when the explanations of the bindu are given. You will see that uh, those uh, symbols are very important, and in the Sri Vigyan Bhairav Tantra itself, on the side, uh, on in this part of the book, there is one small bindu given, which looks exactly like the bindi, interestingly as called in non-Bengali, bindi of of the that w women only wear. Okay, so it all comes together. Women wear bindi, which sounds like bindu. I think it it symbolizes this uh, this point of dissolution. It collapses into a point, Bindu. We may regard it as a metaphysical point which is the uh, complete quote-unquote subjectification of the divine or full I, Purnahanta, or objectively as a mathematical point without magnitude. Would this, would this be uh, the uh, unity of, of physics? Round that point is called a mathematical line. Uh, okay, round that point is called a mathematical line which uh, being in touch with every part of the surface of the point makes one point with it. What then, what then is meant by these symbols of the point and line? It is said that the Supreme Shiva sees himself in and as his own power or Shakti. Okay, 
it is said that the supreme shiva sees himself in and as his own power or shakti he is the white point or moon chandra which is illumination and in the completed process he is the i aham aham i side of experience she is the red point and that is exactly what is drawn in the sri vigyan bhairav tantra a red uh, point she is the red point both colors are seen in the microcosmic generation of the child okay so the white of the uh, white point of the moon and red point uh, red and white both colors are seen in the microcosmic generation of the child red too is the color of desire she is fire which is the object of experience or this idam uh, she is fire which is the object of uh, object of experience yeah fire is the object of experience or idam the objective side of experience so now we are not talking about the subjective things this is the objective side of experience with fire the quote unquote this here is nothing but a mass of shiva's own illuminating rays wow okay so this idam idam is nothing but a mass of shiva's own illuminating rays these are reflected in himself as shakti these rays are reflected in him in himself those rays of shiva mass of shiva's own illuminating rays are reflected in shiva as shakti who in the uh, kama kama kala kama kala vilasa is called the pure mirror of shiva shakti is called pure mirror of shiva the self sees the self the rays being thrown back on their source right the rays being thrown back on their source the this that quote unquote this or the idam is the germ of what we call otherness but here the other is and is known as the self the relation and fusion of these two points white and red is called the mixed point or sun these are the three supreme lights a shiva ha shakti which united spell aham or i this sun is thus the state of full iness purnaham bhava purnaham bhava this is the point into which the world at dissolution lapses and from which in due time it comes forth again in the latter case it is okay this is actually <laughs> uh, i i hate to bring um, ac- proper true modern science in this but uh, the 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 so called god particle in the cern hadron collider has some similar uh, uh, things going on um this is the point into which the world at dissolution lapses and from which in due time it comes forth again in the latter case it is the lord consciousness as the supreme i and power about to create for this reason bindu is called a condensed or massive form of shakti it is the tenth state of power immediately prior to its uh, immediately prior to its first actualization yeah this is a very important point so it is the that uh, bindu is the tense state of power immediately prior to its first actualization okay is the moment time uh, right before it's about to actualize that form of shakti again by which the actualization takes place is maya and this is the line round the point that sheath we were talking about this is very well written very well explained as coil round the point it is the sup- uh, actually i wh- while buying this book i had this hunch that and because i had read some portions of uh, principles of tantra on internet ar- archives i was i had a guess that since most of us have no clue about any hindu scriptures and texts primary sources these days i think we are all basically in the same spot uh, sir john woodroff was in 1918 we are all basically tourists in the uh, in the indian culture and hindu culture we are all basically foreigners especially uh, uh, um, at least i am so i th- i was i had a hunch that i would really benefit from this book as opposed to some other books uh, and that is that is what exactly what i'm saying because when you read primary sources or commentaries of primary sources they are mainly talking to believers right so they just uh, casually say things which are not explained everything in in full detail as if uh, in the way that i expect uh, 
to be explained because uh, my knowledge level is what something uh, a kid would have had 200 300 or 500 years prior uh, from from today or 1000 years from today so i'm a beginner in these things most of us are so uh, we need someone who was is also an outsider to teach us these things to us who are now also kind of outsiders to our own culture that is why i'm i'm finding this uh, writing style very juicy that form of shakti again by which the actualization takes place is maya and this is the line round the point as coiled round the point it is the supreme serpent power maha kundalini encircling the shivalinga from out of this power comes the whisper to enjoy in worlds of form as the memory of past universes arises therein shakti then quote and quote sees s w e s it sees sees with sides shakti then sees shakti opens her eyes as she reawakens from the cosmic sleep nimesha which is dissolution the line is at the at first coiled and one with the point because power is then at rest creation is movement an uncoiling of maya shakti hence is the world called jagat which means what moves jagat means what moves the nature of this power is circular or spiralin hence the roundness and curvature of things of which we now hear nothing moves in a really straight line hence again the universe is called a spheroid brahmanda under the cosmic egg the gross worlds the th- the physical sthula worlds are circular universal movements in space in which is the ether akasha consciousness as the full purna and is never dichotomized but the finite centers which arise in it are so okay this is again a complex sentence the gross worlds are circular universal movements in space in which the akasha consciousness as the full is never dichotomized akasha and, and consciousness but the finite centers which arise in the akasha consciousness are dichotomized the point or bindu then divides into three in various ways the chief of which is knower knowing known which constitute the duality of the world experience by mind of matter okay knower the knowing and known unsurpassed for its uh, let me check some comments once again i have not heard of this one before i always felt dharmic texts are much more easier to understand in indian languages in in, uh, in english sometimes i don't even understand what they are really going on about that is my main problem because i am reading most of it in english no that that's why it's get, getting even tougher in sri vigyan bhairav tantra mainly brahm uh, omkaras and egg so cosmic ed- egg in english yeah uh, funny i f- i'm finding this uh, very mathematical yeah bent on dissecting from the top to reach a uh, core of subject as opposed to exper- experiential which is recommended i from within yeah uh, all i'm uh, finding out every day with hindu texts is that there is an atheist explanation for every th- everything that's uh, claimed in hindu uh, texts scriptures i- practices rituals everything so you can absolutely parallelly have a scholastic scholarly and atheist approach to this and and have a fruitful experience even then <clears throat> unsurpassed for its profound analysis is the account of the 36 tatvas or stages of cosmic evolution accepted by both shaivas and shaktas given by the northern shaiva school of the agama which flourished after the date which uh, after the date which western orientalists assigned to shankaracharya and which was therefore in a position to criticize him according to this account which i greatly condense subject and object in pure being are indistinguishable union as the supreme shiva shakti we have then to see how this unity is broken up into subject and object this does not take place all at once there is an immediate stage of transition in which there is a subject and object but both are part of the self self with capital s which knows its object to be itself right in man's experience they are wholly separate in man's experience they are wholly separate because man is veiled to some extent, extent and is also uh, a, a lower spiritual animal in man's experience they are wholly separate 
the ob that the object then being perceived as outside the self the plurality the plurality of selves being uh, mutually exclusive centers the process and the result are the work of shakti okay the process and the result are the work of shakti whose special function is to negate that is to negate her own fullness so that it becomes the finite center contracted as a limited subject perceiving a limited object both being aspects of the one divine self let's read this sentence again the process and the result of that process are the work of shakti whose special function is to negate negate what negate her own fullness her own purnaness so that it becomes the finite center contracted as a limited subject perceiving a limited object both being aspects of the one divine self the first stage after the supreme the first stage after the supreme is that in which shakti withdraws herself and leaves as it were standing by itself the i the first stage after the supreme is that in which shakti withdraws herself and leaves as it were standing by itself the i side of what when completed is the i this aham idam experience i dash this okay uh okay this is a tricky sentence the first stage after the supreme is that in which uh, shakti withdraws herself and leaves as it were standing by itself the i side the aham side of what when completed is the i and this aham idam experience but simultaneously aham idam so uh, there is a separation here not the unity uh, aham i and idam is the light of uh, rays of of uh, shiva but simultaneously for the i uh, uh, because the i must have its content but simultaneously she represents herself as a this idam at first faintly and then clearly the emphasis being at first laid on the i and then on the this quote unquote this this last is the this last is the stage of ishvara tatva or bindu as the mantra shastra dealing with the causal stage of sound or shabda calls it in the second and third stage and also in the fourth stage which follows though there is an i and a this and therefore not undistinguishable i this of the supreme experience yet both i and the this are experienced as aspects of and in the self okay mm, this i'm understanding so yet both i and the this are experienced as aspects of the self okay i and this are both experienced as aspects of the self and also the i and this are in the self fair enough then as a preliminary to the division which follows the emphasis is laid equally on the i and the this at this point maya shakti intervenes and completely separates the two for that power is the sense of difference bheda buddhi we have now the finite centers mutually exclusive of one another each seeing to the extent of its power okay each seeing to the extent of its power finite centers as objects outside of and different from the self consciousness thus becomes contracted in lieu of being all knowing it is a little quote unquote little knower and in lieu of being almighty power it is a quote unquote little doer maya is not rightly rendered illusion maya cannot be called illusion in the first place it is conceived as a real power of being and as such is one with the full reality the full the full meaning f uh, full with capital f the full free of all illusion experiences the engendering of the finite centers okay the full which is free of all illusion experiences the engendering of the finite centers meaning engendering meaning the the placement of the finite centers and the centers themselves in and as its own changeless partless self it is these individual centers produced from out of power as maya shakti which are ignorance or avidya shakti they are so called because they are not a full experience but an experience of parts in the whole 
in another sense this quote unquote ignorance is a knowing namely that which is uh, namely that which a finite center alone has okay this ignorance is a knowing uh, and the that finite center alone has this ignorance or that knowing even god cannot have man's mode of mode of knowledge and enjoyment without becoming man he by and he by and as his power does become man and yet remains himself man is power in limited form as a vidya yeah man is power in limited form as a vidya the lord is unlimited power as maya well this is a great clarification man is power uh, in limited form as avidya the lord is unlimited power as maya in whom then is the illusion not in the lord all will admit nor is it in fact in man whose nature it is to regard his limitations as real therefore maya cannot be called as uh, illusion nor is it in fact in man whose nature it is to regard his limitations as real because the limitations are real whatever be the talk of it because these limitations are he because these limitations are he meaning man not not he with capital h okay for these limitations are he his experience as man his experience as man provides no standard whereby uh, his ex- experience as man provides no standard whereby it may be adjudged quote unquote illusion the latter is non conformity with nor- normal experience and here so uh, n- normal uh, mankind uh, men th- uh, they uh, the the latter man is non conformity with normal experience and here it is the normal experience which is said to be the illusion okay yeah that is what we usually call maya and that should not be it the normal experience should not be called illusion because all we have is non conformity with the normal experience if there were no avidya shakti there would be no man right yeah if there were no avidya shakti there would be no man in short the knowing which is uh with capital letters full experience in short the knowing which is full experience is one thing and the knowing of the limited experience is a separate thing is another thing okay yeah knowing of the full experience and knowing of the limited experience the latter knowing of the limited experience is avidya and the power to produce it pro- and the power to produce that avidya is maya both are eternal aspects of reality reality with capital r both are eternal sanatan aspects of reality though the forms which are avidya shakti come and go okay this is very advanced though the forms which are avidya shakti they come and go if we seek to relate the one to the other where and by whom is the comparison made not in the full not by the full no, not in the full experience and not by the full experience beyond all relations yeah okay we 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 cannot afford to uh, misunderstand or not understand anything we are uh, reading here okay because the sentences are now getting pretty precise uh, and very accurate and dense so if, if we don't understand one sentence we will miss out on a, on a lot of things so if we seek to relate the one to the other uh, so uh, avidya shakti and maya if we seek to relate the one to the other where and by whom is the comparison made not in and by the full experience beyond all relations where no questions are asked or answers given but on the standing ground of present finite experience where all subjectivity and objectivity are real and where therefore ipso facto illusion is is negatived the two aspects are never present at one and the same time for comparison the universe is real as a limited thing to the limited experiencer who is himself a part of it but the experience of the supreme person or uh, parahanta is necessarily different otherwise it would not be the supreme experience at all 
a god who experiences uh, just as man uh, a god who experiences just as man does is no god but man there is therefore no experiencer to whom the world is illusion hmm there is therefore there is no experiencer to whom the world is illusion this is very 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 well said he who sees the world in the normal waking state loses it in that form in ecstasy samadhi it may however with the shakta be said that the supreme experience is entire and unchanging and thus the fully real and that though the limited experience is also real in its own way the limited experiencing meaning our world the limited experience is also real in its own way it is yet an experience of change in its twin aspects of time and space maya therefore is the power which engenders which means it it places itself therefore uh maya therefore is the power which engenders in itself finite centers in time and space and avidya is such experience in fact of the finite experiencer in time and space okay avidya is such experience in fact of the finite experiencer which we are in time and space so much is this so that the time theorists or kalavadins give the name supreme time parakala to the creator who is also called by the shakta great time mahakala so in the bhairava yamala bhairava yamal it is said that the uh, that mahadeva shiva distributes his rays of power in the form of the year y e a r baras that is timeless experience appears in the finite centers as broken up into periods of time this is the lesser time quote unquote lesser time which comes in with the sun moon six seasons and so forth which are all shaktis of the lord the existence and movements of which give rise okay the existence and movements of uh, uh, that shakti and lord and they give rise in the limited observer which we are we are the limited observer they give rise in us the notion of time and space oh let me have some uh, water now and i forgot to have some coffee with me on this very important chapter wow this book is pretty tough advanced and dense i had no idea and let me check some comments for a while listening to indic language explanations versus english is like sub <laughs> versus dub experience of anime <laughs> reminds me we should make uh, anime on ved kathankas uh, kathanka yeah puranas in sanskrit and just giving subs and if uh, and if quality is good we will have many uh, followers a die of happiness if, if that happens we should make more money than uh, than higher professionals in every field i mean that's my retirement plan yeah Mm, an anime on narsimha avatar and hiranyakashipu is needed for it is yes <laughs> i read on x recently <laughs> yolo is the peak intellectual achievement of atheism rag but man yeah actually true you only live once so do it all now well i think it's more about lazy atheists as opposed to intellectual ones yes how long is this chapter okay thankfully just two pages more i thought i will <laughs> read a law uh, a, 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 a gigantic part of the book today i had no idea that i would be so tired mentally after this wow so that observer uh, meaning the limited observer which we are that observer is essentially the self or spirit vehicled spirit quote unquote spirit vehicled by its own shakti in the form of mind and matter these two are its body the the mind and matter mind and matter are its body it with capital i the first subtle the second gross yeah mind is sukshma matter is thula both have a common origin namely the supreme power each is a real mode of it mode of it it with capital i again each of these two things mind and matter are a real mode of it one therefore does not produce the other both are produced by and exists as a mode of the same cause cause with capital c the supreme power 
there is a necessary parallelism between the perceived and the perceiver because uh, and because mind and matter are at base one as modes of the same power one can act on the other mind is the subjective and matter the objective aspect of the one polarized consciousness one polarized consciousness yeah that is a great way to think of it these are not contradictions okay it's just one consciousness with two poles with the unimportant exception of the uh, loka lokayat lokayatas the hindus have never shared what sir william jones called the quote unquote vulgar notions of matter according to which it is regarded as some gross lasting and independently existing outside thing modern western science now also deter uh, dematerializes the ponderable matter of the universe into energy this and the forms in which it is displayed actually they don't anymore this was this book was written in 1918 now uh, theoretical physics acknowledges dark energy and uh, dark matter this and the forms in which it is displayed is the power of the self power with capital p self with capital s this and the forms in which it is displayed is the power of the self to appear as the object of a limited center of knowing okay power of the self to appear as the object of a limited center of knowing mind again is the self as consciousness limited by its power okay capital i capital p mind again is the self as consciousness limited by its power into such a center by such contraction there is in lieu of an quote unquote all knower a little knower and in lieu of an all doer a little doer those however to whom this way of looking at things is naturally difficult may regard the supreme shakti from the objective aspect of holding within itself the germ of all matter which develops in it both mind and matter exist in every particle of the universe though not explicitly displayed in the same way in all there is no corner of the universe which contains anything either potential or actual okay there is no corner of the universe which contains anything either potential or actual which is not to be found elsewhere hmm there is no corner of the universe which contains anything either potential or actual which is not to be found elsewhere some aspect of matter or mind however may be more or less explicit or implicit so in the mantra scripture it is said that each letter of the alphabet contains all sound the sound of a particular letter is explicit and the other sounds are implicit this is an interesting way of thinking about it each letter of the alphabet contains all sound the sound of a particular letter is explicit and the other sounds are implicit the sound of a particular letter is a particular physical audible mode okay the sound of a particular letter is a particular physical audible mode of the shabda brahman brahman as the cause of shabda or sound in whom whom with capital w in whom is all sound actual and potential pure consciousness is fully involved pure consciousness is fully involved in the densest forms of gross or organic matter which is not quote unquote inert but full of movement or spanda because there is not n a g u h t okay for there is not but the nothing but the because there is nothing but the supreme consciousness which does not move hmm pure consciousness is fully involved in the densest form of gross or organic matter which is not inert but full of movement or spanda because there is nothing but the supreme consciousness which does not move hmm only the supreme consciousness does not move immanent in mind and matter is consciousness chit shakti in organic matter is thus consciousness in full subjection to the power of ignorance okay right this is also something i had uh, understood from re- reading sri aurobindo in organic matter is therefore what it is consciousness but that consciousness of that inorganic matter is fully subjected by power of ignorance okay so it means that consciousness in this case uh, when it is completely subordinate to the power of ignorance that's when that is uh, inorganic matter it is thus consciousness identifying itself with such organ inorganic matter matter in all its five forms of density 
matter in all its five forms of density is present in everything mind too is there though owing to its imprisonment in matter undeveloped yeah quote the brahman sleeps in the stone end quote yeah these are uh, things i have understood in sri aurobindo life too which displays itself with the organization of matter is potentially contained in being being with capital b of which such inorganic matter is to some to some people a quote unquote lifeless form from this deeply involved state shakti enters into higher and higher organized forms prana or vitality is a shakti the mantra form of which is hangsa with the mantra hang the breath goes forth with sa it is withdrawn hang wow with sa it is indrawn hang sa hang sa that's how it's supposed to be pronounced a fact which anyone can verify for himself if he will attempt to inspire after putting the mouth in the way it is placed in order to produce the letter h h sa the rhythm of creative power as of breathing a microcosmic form of it is twofold an outgoing pravritti or evolution as universe and an involution or return nivritti of supreme power to itself shakti as the great heart of the universe pulses forth back and of uh, pulses forth and back in cosmic systole and diastole okay that is the uh, the the very source of vibration any any physics or sound engineering student will know any any audio sound is created by vibration and if vibration if the frequency is that high it can become a solidified thing which is why supersonic vibrations are used to even injure people it's used as a weapon so much for the nature okay so shakti as the great heart of the universe pulses forth and back cosmic systole and diastole so much for the nature of the power as an evolutionary process wow therefore the vibration that is caused if we are talking about that as shakti isn't that the main evolutionary process isn't that the source of all evolutionary process that vibration yeah it is displayed <coughs> it is displayed in the forms evolved as an increasing exhibition of consciousness from apparently though not truly though not truly unconscious matter okay it is displayed in the forms evolved as an increasing exhibition of consciousness from unconsciousness from unconscious matter though not truly though the slight consciousness of the plant and the greater consciousness of the animal to the more highly developed consciousness of man who in the completeness of his own individual evolution becomes freed of mind and matter which constitute the form and thus is one with the supreme consciousness itself there are no gaps in the process in existence there are no rigid partitions the vital phenomena to which we give the name of quote unquote life appear it is true with organized matter but life is not the same not the, the uh, but life is not then something entirely new which had no sort of being before for such life is only a limited mode of being which itself is no dead thing but the infinite life all of all lives to the hindu the difference between plant and animal and between the latter and man Uh, between plant and animal and animal and man has always been one rather of degree than of kind there is one so it's there are these are three they, these aren't three different kinds of things but they are three things in a in a same line of uh, ascension basically there are degrees uh, of of beings there is one consciousness and one mind and matter throughout though the matter is organized okay though the matter is organized and the mind is exhibited in in various ways the one shakti is the self as the string or sutratma the one shakti is the self as the sutratma on which all the beads of form are strung wow what a great way to explain this so the one shakti is the self the self is the sutratma in which the one string in which all the beads of form are strung and these beads again are limited modes of herself as the string whoa the beads themselves are limited modes of herself herself with capital h as the string evolution is thus 
the loosening of the bonds in which consciousness itself unchanging the bonds in which consciousness itself unchanging is held such loosening being increased and consciousness more fully exhibited okay and consciousness more fully exhibited as the process is carried forward as the process is carried forward is is loosened more and more at length is gained that human state which the scripture calls so quote unquote hard to get for it has been won by much striving and through suffering that is you have become a human because of much uh, striving and suffering therefore the scripture warns man not to neglect the opportunities of a stage which is necessary preliminary necessary preliminary to the attainment of the full experience okay being a m- human being is the preliminary last stage before uh, attainment of the quote unquote full experience man by his striving must seek to become fully humane and then to pass yet further into the divine fullness which is beyond all forms with their good and evil this is the work of sadhana a word which comes from the root sad to exert which is discipline ritual worship and yoga sadhana it is that by which any result siddhi is attained the tantric shastra is a sadhana scripture as powers are many so may be sadhana which is of various kinds and degrees man may seek to realize the mother power in her limited forms okay man may seek to realize the mother power in her limited forms as health strength long life wealth magic powers and so forth the so called new th- quote unquote new thought and kindred literature which bids men to think power and thus which ma- bids men to think power power with capital e as well here the so the, the so called quote unquote new thought and kind and and the literature of that sort which bids men to think power and thus to become power is very ancient going back at least to the upanishad which says which says quote what a man thinks that he becomes those who have need uh, need for the infinite mother as she is not in any form but in herself seek directly the adorable one in whom is the essence of all which is of finite worth the gist of a high form of kula sadhana is given in the following verse from the hymn mahakala rudra himself to mahakali quote i torture not my body with penances if not his body hers if man be god in human guise why torment him hmm if man is god in human guise why torment him that is the question being asked Uh, as a commentary by the author i torture not my body with penances i lame not my feet in pilgrimage to holy places the body is devalaya or temple of divinity therein are all spiritual tirthas or holy places which we had read in Brahm, uh, brahma purana as well why then trouble to go elsewhere i spend not my time in reading the vedas end quote uh, the vedas which he has already studied are the record of the standard spiritual experience of others he seeks now to have the experience himself directly what is the use of merely reading about it the kularnava tantra enjo- enjoins the mastering of the essence of all scriptures which should be which should then be put aside just as he who has threshed out the grain throws away the husks and straw but i st- quote now the final quote but i strive to attain thy two sacred feet hmm this was a this was a uh, very interesting uh, way to end the chapter okay so uh, listen let's listen to the to the full quote without any commentaries i torture not my body with penances i lame not my feet in pilgrimage to holy places i spend not my time reading the vedas but i strive to attain thy two feet thy two sacred feet this is mahakal talking to mahakali so this is why T- tantra is very much in favor of practices and not the scholarly approach and why the justification is basically given here uh, well let me just mark it why experience matters why experience is sarvopari in tantra and not uh, philosophy wisdom etc because because the human because the human body is the devale therefore you don't need to go to any place to do pilgrimage uh, since god has himself or or uh, mahakal has himself 
written the vedas or is the vedas therefore why would you would you as a human just read the vedas as as a scholarly approach therefore the thing to do is always experience and since uh, your body is is mahakal's body therefore why should you torture your body with penances <laughs> therefore mainly just strive for the attainment of the two sacred fe- feet of mahakali by practices and experiences what a chapter <sighs> wow just 1 hour 50 minutes this is uh, this is one of our shorter sh- one of our shortest live streams this is probably a second shortest live streams but it feels like a gigantic live stream <sighs> in is power in capital a translation of shakti yeah next day some day soon probably in the, in the next 3 4 days we will start chapter 3 chapter 3 is called what are the tantras and their significance <sighs> hamsa yeah hamsa is in swan yeah that is what hamsa actually uh, is actually hamsa has a separate meaning as well but that word is also used for swans like trees are also called padapa it means something that drinks water with its feet that's how sanskrit works so uh, that in the same way hamsa has some other meaning as far as i remember vivek debra had explained it but that word is u- also used for swans yeah it was a very heavy dose <laughs> um what are uh, uh, lokayatas in hindu context like i read that is uh, something to do with hindus in uh, majhim nikaya i don't know see what you can find in google by the way who was that guy yesterday saying harivamsha is not part of mahabharat i cross check from alberuni records he says it was during 130 ad uh 10, 1030 ad i see okay then good night guys this was a great live stream see you soon probably tomorrow with a bengali live stream good night